in the backward direction. All right. And again, this doesn't have to be halfway. It can be really anywhere in between there. And we're trying to figure out uh, the head. I guess this is not have even a comma around it. The head in a backwards direction is equal to the same thing over delta x here. All right. So what this thing does is it, it basically we're trying to get a an estimate of the head at some point by using the heads that are at these particular nodes, realizing that we may not know what those heads are. And that'll be shown here in a second. All right, so let's let's just take a look then at what where this gets us, because right now it's it's like I don't understand what's going on. You remember that the governing equation has second derivatives in it. And a second derivative is simply the derivative of a derivative. Now, we have actually examined this part, all right, through this finite difference approximation. What we want to do is take the derivative of that. So the finite difference is a way of getting, uh, is actually figuring out the derivative. All right, and and actually approximating what that is using a series of steps. That's why it's called discrete uh, discrete approximation. So this is a second derivative. So to get that, and you may have to kind of take a look at, at back on this. To get that, what we do is we take what we did in the forward direction. We take from that what we did in the backward direction and we divide it by delta x. Uh, and delta x then gets us back to actually the head that we want at this particular point. All right, so we step out, we step back, we subtract those, and the delta x, remember, is the distance between the lattice points, and that's the same distance that's here, all right? And this, then, is an approximation of the second derivative in finite difference form in the x kind of direction. Oh, God, what's this going to tell me? So you could use this. This is essentially what you did when you did the kind of the iteration exercise uh, in the column, all right? What we're going to do here is we're going to uh, actually have this iterate and come to a solution that solves this. All right? It's a very simplified way. Finite element methods go a whole different direction, all right, and use a whole different set of functions that are difficult to kind of show this way. This you can think of it as an average averaging technique. All right, and that's all it is. All right. So uh, if you combine terms, if you take this, you notice that ij appears twice. You get this, and you pull the x into here, all right, and combine those terms, you get this. And so this solves for head at some point ij, all right, um, basically using this. And the characteristic of this is this 2hij term. So you're solving for head at a point, but that head is also in the equation on the right. So this generally means that there will, there will be a uh, some kind of a iteration procedure to deal with that. Remember, you've had probably equations with unknowns on both sides or something. That's an example here. Um, all right. So this is the equa this is the equation for a single row, and uh, assuming you know x, and if you know this and you've known this, and we'll show why this works in a second. Okay, so I think pretty easy so far, and when you see how this works, so you'll be amazed that it actually does work. Now, if we want to do J, or the Y direction, <coughs> these are the columns, then we would go the other way, so we would have a, uh, something that went, goes like this. All right, and uh, the same kind of deal, I just skipped the steps. And this solves for head along a single column. Now, we're still dealing with one dimensions here. All right, one dimension here. And Mitch, you'll notice that what we've done here is we've said, 
you know, head here is, that's minus, this is plus. And the reason that we do it this way is because uh, the sweeping arrangement that we use when we solve these goes like this. So this one is always the head that we know, this is the head that we don't know. And so it, it needs, this need to be the old values, these need to be the new, so that the minus ones are back on this side. It's just a convention to kind of keep us um, kind of sane, I guess. All right, so we've got two equations, both one-dimensional in form. Uh, if we want to do the Laplace equation, then we combine those two, and because we know that it's steady state, we set those to zero. Okay, so this is the equation that you'll get to know and love. This is what we'll do in, uh, we'll work with this on Friday doing a spreadsheet model. It's actually in your book. Now, um, everybody see how we, how, what we just did? We took the x and the y direction and we combined them and this is this term this is this term. And so, so what you see here is an algebraic equation that solves the differential equation that's here. Remember we said, you know, the part of the game is to solve the algebra, uh, solve the differential equation using algebra. Well, we just did. And this is the, the technique we used is just finding differences. Now, I, you know, I do post these up on the web, so if you don't want to write them down, you know, feel free. I see some of you are feeling free not to write them down. Aaron's already seen all this, so. Okay. Um, so we've got that. Now what we need to do is to combine terms. All right, and we can do that because the HIJ appears in both sides. Um, and so this means that these four minus the head that we're looking for is equal to zero. And then we can solve for that head. And this is the kicker. So what this says.